Welcome to our review on Smart Paints. So the first type of Smart Paint we're going to consider are the Thermochromic Paints. Now anytime we're talking about a Thermochromic pigment, we're talking about one that's sensitive to temperature. So Thermo, think temperature, and Chromic's all to do with colour. So a Thermochromic is one that's going to change colour in different temperatures. What we find is that not only can we have these in paints, but we can also have them as heat sensitive dyes. So that means that you can actually get clothing that changes color when the temperature changes. So one temperature they'll be colorless, and then as the temperature changes, they're going to change to a completely different color. Now we can also mix these thermochromic pigments with acrylic paint to give a wider range of color changes and therefore make it a little bit more creative in what we're doing. So I've given you a few examples in the pictures there of some of the things that we can use these thermochromic pigments for. One thing you've probably encountered at some point in your life is the old thermometer strip that you stick on your forehead. So that's got the thermochromic pigments in there because your heat from your body temperature is going to then cause different colours to occur depending on what temperature you actually are. And on the right hand side we've got a couple of products designed more for babies. So we've got the baby spoon, which changes colour if obviously the food is too hot. So it's kind of a warning system telling people who may not have checked the baby's food that, you know what, this is too hot, don't put it in your baby's mouth. And also we've got the good old rubber duck that's been upgraded for the 21st century with thermochromic pigments. So that, again, for parents that may not necessarily be thinking too much about the temperature of the bath they're about to put their baby in, You've got a little rubber duck floating around and if that rubber duck goes bright red it's a big warning sign saying do not apply baby to bath water it will burn so it's almost like an idiot's guide to bathing your baby that if the rubber duck goes red it's too hot and that's all caused by these thermochromic pigments that we can put into those products the second type of pigment that we're going to concern ourselves with are the phosphorescent pigments now these ones glow in the dark so what happens is when they're exposed to light, they're going to absorb energy and then that energy will be released as light over a longer period of time. So obviously it's going to be absorbing that energy right through the daytime and then as it gets dark, that energy is going to be released and that's going to be given out as this light energy. Once they've actually released all of the stored energy, they stop glowing. So it's not a never ending supply. It's only until that stored energy has been released. So a couple of places you might have seen them you can get mobile phone cases that use these phosphorescent pigments so that it will glow in the dark so you know where your phone is and you can get the old glow in the dark stars you probably had stuck on your ceilings or walls as a child what we used to use for these glow in the dark pigments were radioactive substances so we used to have this mixture of radium and phosphors which generates radiation which glows so Obviously, that was one way we could have made the little watch dial glow, but it's not a good thing. We know that radiation can damage our cells, and if our cells become damaged, there's a risk of developing cancer. So these days, we tend to avoid, obviously, the radioactive substances for the glow-in-the-dark paints, and we favour the other phosphorescent pigments, because at the end of the day, no one really wants to damage their cells and get cancer just to be able to read what their watch says in the dark.